Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the various editions of Linux Mint. So if you were thinking about trying out Linux, maybe you were uh, thinking of getting away from Windows because Windows 11 is getting kind of out of control, or maybe you just wanted to dual boot with Windows and Linux, or maybe you're going to try out some uh, Linux editions on a virtual machine. Uh, we're going to show you the differences between them, and then we're going to show you the actual desktops for each one, and then we'll actually go through the installation procedure for one of them as well. All right, so we're not going to get super in-depth because there are quite a bit of differences between them. So we're just going to go over the basic differences and then show you the interfaces uh, for all of them. And then, like I said, you could see which one you think might work the best for you. All right, so first we have Cinnamon Edition. So this is the flagship version developed by the Mint team. And there is also an Ubuntu Cinnamon Edition. So we did a video on that, uh, which is actually a pretty nice version as well. So I'll put a link in the description for that in case you want to check out that version. All right, so the key features of the Cinnamon Edition, so it uses a Cinnamon desktop, it has a modern user-friendly interface, uh, rich animations and effects, a lot of customization options. So this offers you the best out-of-the-box experience and it's good for people coming from Windows. And it has a nice update manager, software manager, and so on. Since it offers more bang for the buck, it has the most features here, it's gonna be slightly heavier on system resources, but if your computer will run Windows 11, it'll run this, no problem, so you really don't have to worry about that. So it's not ideal for older or low-spec machines, but I think it'd have to be pretty old for it not to run on it. All right, then we have the Mate edition. So this is a lightweight version with a traditional desktop. So this is more of an older version, so it's not going to have all the fancy features that Cinnamon does. So it'll use the Mate desktop, which is a fork of GNOME 2. A uh, simple classic interface, stable and mature, a lower resource usage than Cinnamon, great for mid-range or older hardware, and familiar layout for long-time Linux users. So a couple considerations, fewer visual flourishes, and slightly less modern than Cinnamon. All right, then we have the XFCE edition. So this is the lightest and fastest option. So if you're looking for performance or trying to run this on a really old computer, then this is probably your best bet here. All right, so it has the XFCE desktop environment. It's fast and highly configurable. It prioritizes speed over aesthetics. So it's excellent for very old or low-powered machines. It has fast boot times and low memory usage and highly stable and responsive. So a couple of considerations. It has a basic appearance, which can be customized, and fewer built-in features compared to Cinnamon. All right, then this one here, which is going to give an honorable mention. We're not going to show you this, but it's just worth talking about here. So we have LMDE, so Linux Mint Debian Edition. So this is their backup plan in case Ubuntu becomes unstable, then they'll switch over to Debian. So it'll use Debian instead of Ubuntu as a Cinnamon desktop still. Uh, fewer dependencies on Ubuntu infrastructure. It'll have more direct access to Debian packages. So that might be better for you if you like the Debian packages. Uh, slightly faster and leaner than Ubuntu-based Mint. Great for advanced users who prefer Debian. And a couple considerations. Uh, less beginner-friendly and fewer third-party PPAs and Ubuntu-based tools. All right, then we have this little chart here at the bottom here. So here's the additions, the desktop environment it uses, performance rating, visual style, and what it's best for. So if you want to pause the video and check that out. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Cinnamon Mate and XFCE. We're going to check out the desktops on each one, and then we will go ahead and install Cinnamon just so you can see the installation process. All right, so first we're on Cinnamon, and I opened a terminal here, and I just put Cinnamon so we'll know which one we're on in case you forget while we're going through these. All right, so we have our basic desktop here. You're going to notice that they kind of look the same in between all three of them, so you're going to have to just kind of really look for the nuances. Uh, when it comes to telling them apart and their features and so on. All right, so we have our panel down here. You could right click on it, go to the settings, add applets, edit it, move, add a new one, like to the top or side. It's kind of like a taskbar. And then you have your settings here. And then we have our file manager here, it uses files. Firefox for the browser, then our quote unquote start button here with our power settings. Now that we get to our files, terminal, uh, system settings, software manager, let's look at that real quick.
Okay, so a lot of packages to choose from here. Then we have all of our applications. We'll just kind of scroll through this kind of slowly so you can see what we have here. And of course, you can search for them at the top. So a lot of apps pre-configured with Cinnamon. And of course, they're broken down into various categories here if you want to find them that way. All right, then if we right click, we could check out the desktop backgrounds, for example, just to see what we could change them into. So we have specific Linux Mint ones and then some other generic wallpapers here. And of course, you could pull a picture from your own pictures. All right, then down here, Bluetooth settings, network settings, uh, volume, date, and time, show the desktop. And you notice on all of them, when you boot into live mode, you're going to have an option to install right here, which we'll be doing in a little bit here. So when you run Linux in live mode, and you just boot to the ISO file of the flash drive, you're just running it in memory, so anything you do will not be saved. So keep that in mind. So if you, you know, download a file or install something, uh, when you go to restart it, it'll all be gone and be reset to the way it was when you first booted up here. All right, so now let's hop over to the Mate version and take a look at that. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it does look very similar. I just changed the uh, background on all these so we can kind of tell them apart. So we have our same options down here. Right click on our panel. Th these options are different than what we saw in Cinnamon, but you could probably do most of the same stuff. You know, add, a, add to a panel, add a new panel, delete the panel, and so on. And then if we right click on the desktop here, we have options here for creating folders, open a terminal. Uh, here's the background settings. You can change the fonts and the interface and the theme. So not a bad selection there. All right, and then if you click on the quote-unquote start menu again, for lack of a better term, uh, you can see this looks different as well. You have your folders here, your main folders. Here's the software manager. So you still have a lot of good options here as well. All right, and then we'll check out our apps here. So if we go back to all, Here's everything that's installed with it. Still quite a bit of applications, maybe not as many as Cinnamon. And you can tell the interface looks a little more dated than Cinnamon does, just not quite as polished. So not too bad. It's a good option. All right, so now let's hop over to the next one. All right, so we're on XFCE. So let's start by right-clicking our desktop here. You still get a good amount of options here. Go to the settings, you still have some nice wallpapers, menus and icon options. If you right-click the panel, you can see we don't have quite as many options, but you can still add new panel items, move the panel, rename it, and so on. Then we have our file manager here, so it uses a different one, Thunar, if I'm saying that correctly. And then we have Firefox as well. And here's our minimize button. Similar icons over here. All right, so let's check out our apps on this computer here. So a little more basic uh, menu here. Very Windows-like, or maybe a Windows 7-like menu here. Different categories. So if we go to All Applications. And then you can see this kind of looks even a little more dated than the Mate version. and doesn't look as good as Cinnamon. But you can see we still have a good amount of applications here. It even comes with LibreOffice. So this would be a good choice as well. All right, so now let's go back over to Cinnamon and just run through the installation real quick so you can see how it's done. All right, so we're going to close this out, and we're going to double-click on Install Linux Mint. All right, so first we'll pick our language, go with the default here. Keyboard layout, pick the right one for us. 
So you'll see this is very similar to installing Windows if you've ever done that. All right, then you have the option to install multimedia codecs. Uh, so if you're going to be playing some videos and doing that kind of stuff, you might want to install it, but I'm going to leave it unchecked for the sake of time here. All right, so you can see it did something with our video driver here, took up the rest of the screen. All right, so here's where you got to pay attention when it comes to installing Linux. So if you are installing this on a standalone computer or as a virtual machine with just a single drive, then you should probably just go with this option here. But if you have maybe a dual boot system or you want to leave some of the drive partitioned or left alone for something else later, uh, then you could come here and make your own partitions. And we have this advanced features button here. So if you want to use LVM, you could do that or to use encryption, kind of like BitLocker. All right, so we're going to just going to erase the whole disk here. So we're going to click on install now. So telling us what it's going to do here, the partition it's going to create. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. All right, so now we need to pick our time zone. If it doesn't auto detect it, you can just kind of click where you are or do it from the drop down here. All right, now we need a username. We'll go with Bob. And then we'll give it a computer name. Let's call this Mint OS. So then it'll take the username based on your name that you type here and make it lowercase. So you can change this if you want. Just give it a password. Using a weak password here. Then you could have it log in automatically, which of course is a security risk, but that's up to you. And then you could have it encrypt your home folder if you want to do that. We're going to leave that unchecked. Okay, click on continue. All right, so this part will take some time here, so I will pause the video and then be back when it's done. All right, so the installation is complete, so maybe it took five, 10 minutes, so it wasn't too bad. So of course that's going to vary depending on the speed of your computer. So now we could continue testing, running it in live mode, or we could restart to load the version that we just installed on the hard drive, so we're going to do that. Okay, then it wants you to take out your flash drive and press enter. Alright, so now we're booted up to the actual installation on our hard drive. And we get the startup screen, so you can uncheck this if you don't want to see it every time you restart here. So it gives you a little welcome screen. You have some first steps if you want to check out some of the features and launch them right from here. Some documentation if you want to read up about it, help options, and then if you want to contribute. All right, so now we have a nice full screen view here since we have our video drivers ready to go. You can see here we have some updates, it looks like. So you could install the updates as needed. Then you can see everything else kind of looks the same here. All of our applications. When you install your going to end up with pretty much the same amount of apps that you have when you do the live version. It doesn't really install anything new, maybe some additional tools or something, but for the most part it's going to be the same. But of course you could come into your app manager and then just uh, install whatever you like. So for example, let's say you wanted to install FileZilla. Just select it and click on install. So if you've ever used the uh, Microsoft Store in Windows, it's kind of the same uh, thing here. And it tells you any additional software that will be installed. You can just continue. Then you might need to put in your password to authenticate. All right, then you can just launch it right from here. Simple as that. All right, let's see if we could take a look at some of the settings here real quick. We have backup options, driver manager, a login window, power statistics. You could configure printers, change your software sources, or run the system monitor, kind of like task manager in Windows.
get to the terminal, your update manager, manage your users if you want to add some additional users. And you could do a standard or an administrator just like you can with Windows. Right, let's check out some of the preferences here. Account details, actions, install some new applets, change your background, uh, Bluetooth, change your date and time. You want to go into your disks. You can manage your disks from here as well, kind of like the uh, disk management tool in Windows. Let's see what else we got here under preferences. Network configuration. All your options here. Uh, wake on LAN. Security options, proxy options, IPv4. So we're using DHCP. You could do a manual IP address if you want to configure IPv6. You have your built in firewall, your fonts, mouse settings, other network settings here. More of a basic uh, network configuration screen compared to the advanced one. I'm going to configure some online accounts to add to your Linux installation. You know, put your Google account, Microsoft account, so on. Panel settings, power management, kind of like Windows has. So you kind of get in the theme here that has a lot of uh, similarities to Windows when it comes to the configuration and layout. Privacy settings, screensaver, sound options. You want to check your startup applications. Disable anything you don't need. System info. You got your text editor. And you have a bunch of system settings. So you can see how you can do all kinds of configurations from here as well. So quite a bit to it. All right, so as you can see, uh, Linux Mint is a good alternative if you're looking to try Linux. And then, like I said, if you have the resources to support it, which you should, uh, you might as well go with the Cinnamon version to get all the bells and whistles. All right, so I'll see if I could fit all that comparison stuff in the description. If so, I'll post it in there. And then I'll also put a link in the description where you could download the various versions of Linux Mint. And then you could try one out or try them all out and see which one works the best for you. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.